Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, we're gonna prep the RV for solar panels. If you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Check us out online at whynotrvusa.com. We also have a great Facebook group that's growing pretty quickly. Uh, just type in Why Not RV under Facebook groups, or you can click the link in the description below. We're also now on Patreon at patreon.com backslash Why Not RV. So what I mean by doing a solar prep, uh, our solar prep on RV is of course I'm already, I'm doing the panels, I'm doing everything like that. But what I mean by the prep is I'm gonna run cabling from the roof down to the underbelly and install a solar charge controller because when you go and buy a new rv and it says that it has solar prep on it that's all that's done is there's cables that go from the roof through a channel to a solar charge controller that's usually rated for like 30 amps it usually tells you somewhere 10 amp 20 amp of what your rv is rated for so what i'm doing is basically doing that exact same thing that a dealer would do or a manufacturer would do is run the cables from the roof through a channel and into the underbelly so let me show you my plans this type of project requires a lot of planning from, you know, deciding on how much power you want to generate to then how can you take that power from your panels, get it down into your batteries safely. And uh, that is kind of what we're doing today is that solar charge controller is that, that middle step in between your solar panels and your batteries to go ahead and move that power safely and efficiently from the panels into your battery bank. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys right here on the screen my panel layout idea. I'm doing 12 100 watt panels. Each one of those panels produces about five amps because they're 20 volt panels. So um, I'm using 10 gauge wire for each of my panels because that 10 gauge wire, I think it's rated for uh, up to 30 feet for 10 amps. So I'm only putting about five amps through it. So Again, I like to be on the safe side, so I'm running that 10 gauge just to be a little bit safer. Um, but then those panels are gonna get wired through that 10 gauge wire into my central um, bus bar location, which is going down from the roof down uh, into the underbelly. Um, you guys are gonna see that here in a bit. So basically all 12 panels are gonna have two wires each because they're all gonna be ran in parallel, positive or negative, and they're all gonna come into these bus bars into the center of the RV and then down two gauge wire uh, to downstairs. One more thing to talk about real quick is the solar charge controller that I actually selected, okay? I picked a Victron product because I already have the Victron Multi Plus, my Victron BMV 712 battery monitor, I have the Victron battery protect for my battery system. I like having all those same uh, systems be all through Victron because they can all talk to each other in a much more efficient and safe manner. So that's why I picked Victron to start with. Now the size of the charger I picked was a 150 slash 85 MPPT solar charge controller. The reason I went with that is because that is 150 volts at 85 amps. That's what it's rated for. So it can, it can take up to 150 volts and up to 85 amps. Now right now running my 12 panels all in parallel connection that's only gonna produce 20 volts. So it's way below the 150. Uh, additionally, 12 panels times five amps is 60 uh, amps and I have 85 amps available. So what that means for me is I have plenty of room to upgrade my panels down the road, add more panels, change them to bigger panels, um, do series parallel connection uh, combo. There's all sorts of things I can do later on down the road by having this oversized solar charge controller. If I did my uh, solar charge controller for exactly what these panels were rated for, and I'm pumping in the max stuff all the time, that's not really good for electronics to be always maxing out what it's capable of doing. So that's why I like to have something that's a little bit overkill because now I have room to grow and room to change things down the road as I see fit or as I say, well, this 1200 watts isn't quite enough. Let's see if we can bump it up. Or uh, my 1200 watts all in parallel isn't enough. Let's change it to a series parallel combo and see if that helps me get some more charging out of it. There's a whole bunch of stuff about that. We'll talk more about that specifically next week. So I have my Victron Multi Plus mounter right here. What I basically plan on doing is mounting a solar charge controller somewhere over here on this wall uh, and running my cables across the top, keeping them all clipped up and over to the other side. Let me show you over there because that's where there's a channel where our vent tubes go from the, the grate and black tank uh, and vent up into the roof. So if there's a channel for tubes, I figured 
there should be room enough for some wires. I mean, the wires that go through there uh, are two gauge wire for what I'm doing. Uh, now, depending on what you're doing, your solar, you might need bigger cables. Um, the two gauge wire, uh, let me find out exactly what it's rated for. I'll tell you guys about that. I'll put it up on the screen, but uh, I know that it's good for what I'm doing. Um, so behind our wall, I took down this other panel and back over there, well, let me get a good angle on it. Right there, those two pipes are the uh, vent tubes for our gray and black tank. And right next to it, uh, on the left side there, you can see one little tiny wire, um, but there's space in there enough for these cables. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up on the roof and I'm gonna drill a hole uh, just a couple inches away from that pipe and ch run our cables down through there and out the bottom. So fingers crossed, let's hope this works. All right, so right here on the roof is our vents. So I already put my uh, my little thing all the way through here and tapped on the roof. So I know that right in this area uh, is a cavity for these cables to run. So we're gonna go ahead and drill a hole through the roof here and get our wires ran down below and uh, hope to God it works. Okay, so I drilled my hole. I went ahead and put my, my little fissure through here. And now we're gonna go downstairs and uh, check and make sure this came out the bottom. I think it did with how much I got left up top. And then we're gonna connect our cables to it and pull our cables down. As you can see our cables, it worked. Uh, I just went downstairs, taped these cables to the fissure and had my buddy up top go ahead and pull these through. So now we got our cables up on the roof. Um, we do need to get this all sealed up. So we're gonna do that in a little bit. But first I'm gonna get this box prepped uh, for what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna show you guys my plans there with my bus bars. So we're gonna go ahead and drill a hole in this box to match where these cables come in. And then we're gonna get this uh, box all prepped and ready for all of our cables. Okay, so here's my basic idea. So this is the box that I'm using. My big cables are gonna come in through the top up here and they're gonna feed into these individual bus bars. So I have eight panels on the right side of my roof and four panels on the left. So I'm gonna be drilling 16 holes on the right side and eight holes on the left side. So what I've started to do is put little marks of where my holes are gonna be about. We're gonna drill one out, get the connector in there, and just go down the line and make sure they're all lined up and sit in there. Uh, and then we're gonna do the bottom side. So I'll have my positive and negative, and they'll come in these individual bus bars, which I'm gonna mount in here. And uh, that's how the cable's gonna go down uh, through the underbelly. Here it is all done and ready. So I got my bus bars in here mounted. I got all my uh, connectors on the side there. So I can set my eight panels on one side and four panels on the other. So now we're gonna take this up to the roof, get it mounted, screw it in place and put our die core in place. Uh, I'll show you that process, um, but basically I'm going to be doing quite a bit of die core um, seal, roof sealing on there, so I'll show you that when we get up top. All right, so I got my cables that come out here, and I connected them up into my bus bar so that it's already ready to go. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take the die core, and I'm going to fill in this hole a little bit. I mean, it's going to be kind of nasty, but I want it to get all throughout these cables as much as I can. I'm going to do it on the bottom side of this thing and all the way around it as well. Um, so I'm gonna create a little ring around it there and then a big ring around the whole thing. And then we're gonna go and screw this down into the roof. All right, so you see I poured a whole bunch of die core in there. got it nice and globbed up on there. I got a nice big thing going all the way around it. And then again, like on the bottom side, I put a circle around here and then I did a circle all the way around it before I press this all in. And as I put the screws in the four corners, I took a little bit of die core and put it on the screw so the screw sucked it down into it. So this should be good. Uh, we'll find out obviously down the road if we have any leaks, I'll let you guys know, but I don't think we're going to. So you can see my cables come all the way down through the wire loom or through that uh, chase up there. So now we got these down here, we're gonna get them routed and uh, get the solar charge controller mounted up. Here's what we got now. I ran our cables up through this chase, which I've run multiple cables through before, um, you know, for when I did the multi-plus and all that stuff. So I ran my cables across from here. Um, they come out over here, along with the cables that go to the batteries, which go through the wall right there and into the batteries. So now, and I mounted up the solar charge controller right there, um, pretty easy. Uh, you know, just four, just four screws right in the four corners. Um, so mounted that up and uh, now we're going to go ahead and get the rest of this all wired up through some circuit breakers 
um, so I can cut the system out if I so desire. And uh, we'll show you what that looks like when we're done. Here's where we're at. I got, let me see if I can do this. All right, so right here is my battery coming in, goes through a circuit breaker up into the solar charge controller. Then I have my positive lead from the roof coming in through a circuit breaker and going into the solar charge controller. Now I have this one off right now because I don't have the panels connected to the roof yet. I went ahead and turned this one on so that I could access the uh, Bluetooth feature of the smart uh, of the controller and set all my settings for my lithium batteries. So I went ahead and did that. And uh, now the next step is adding the panels. Adding the panels is gonna be next week's video. So be sure to stay tuned. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. That's really it for this week's video. If you have any questions, feel free to join us on our Facebook group and shoot me a message. I'm glad to answer or just drop a comment below. And I'm usually pretty quick about responding to those as well. Thanks again for watching One on RV. We'll see you next time. Bye.